I'm Jolene Nguyen, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast a bonus episode. What if he's addicted to sex? Hello, my ladies. This is an impromptu podcast episode. You are going to hear all of my kids and my niece and nephews running around upstairs as I am in the throes of packing up my house and moving. And they're all here being very helpful, as you can hear. And I got, I just got an email just a few minutes ago that I just read from a really sweet follower who has been listening to the podcast for a really long time, months, maybe even more than a year. She's been to several coach weeks. I have talked with her. She's not a client yet, but she has this question. I've had many women ask this question, one or two of them even being my clients, and I wanted to address it here. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit of her email to you just so you guys can get the gist, but basically it's what if he's actually addicted to sex. With all the things of talking about sexuality and my masterclass coming up in February, on February 13th, about confident sexuality, one of the things you ladies know if you've been listening for a while is that I constantly remind you that pornography is not about sex. Now, the question that comes up is, well, what if he's actually addicted to sex? Okay, and what if that is his buffer? Now, that is something that I want to address here today, and I'm going to do so by reading a little bit of this email, okay? She said, you know, I love all your free and small commitment classes, LOL. However, I'm struggling with this one, and I wanted to share with you why and get some feedback on your thoughts and wisdom. Okay, so then she shares that her husband has started with a pornography addiction, and then it progressed into a sexual addiction. I listened to your podcast, and on numerous occasions, you say something like, porn isn't about sex. And I have been able to get so, so much from your podcast and following you and seeing things you share and following them, etc. but this one is making me sad, because in my situation, it is about sex. It's also making me wonder if obsessing, if you will, with your podcast and teachings was to make it sound better to me and lessen the blow. Does that make sense? So my question is, and do you think it would you would recommend this class for me? Would it be helpful even if he is or was struggling with a sex addiction? Okay. Now, that is what I want to address today. And there's several things that I want to talk about here. Now, here's what I want to go back to. She said, um, you say something like porn isn't about sex. But in my situation, it is about sex. Ladies, let me listen. I want you to listen really carefully when I tell you about this. Any addiction is not actually about the substance, okay? Whatever addiction it is, gambling, drinking, smoking, drugs, pornography, sex, shopping, whatever addiction it is has nothing to do with the substance of choice, okay? Sex addiction is not about sex. It's the same thing as pornography addiction is not about pornography. It's about escape. Any addiction is about escaping life, about escaping emotion, about running away and finding relief from whatever it is that's happening internally. Now, most of the time, what happens is there's the initial, what regardless of how addictions begin, Okay, whether it's you were introduced to it as a small child or as a teenager, that you were peer pressured, whatever the reason is that you started, typically what happens is that then there becomes a physical, biological, hormonal response. So there is a physical pattern to break and then an emotional pattern to break. You with me? This is why, you know, drug addicts go through withdrawal. They go through a detox to get all the drugs out of their system, get their physical body over the effects of the drug chemically, but then they also have to do the work emotionally because you can take all of the drugs out of their system and their system can be completely clean physically, but then you throw them back into the same physical world and patterns that they were in and they will fall back into those same emotional patterns. And when they are bored or when they are stressed or when they are anxious or whatever it is, they will turn back to what makes them feel better. And their brain says, hey, I know I don't want to feel whatever it is that I'm feeling right now, I know what would make us feel better is if we did that thing that makes us feel better, whatever that is, gambling, porn, sex, drugs, whatever it is, right? Those are our all artificial highs. All of those give an artificial up at the end, right? This is the same thing with pornography, right? When it's an addiction, there is something that the brain is trying to escape. You're trying to escape an emotion and sex is just another buffer. That becomes the buffer of choice much like pornography is the buffer of choice for most of you, sometimes that can then lead to sex being the buffer of choice. 
Now, I am not a therapist. I am not going to tell you whether or not your husband has crossed the line into that. I am not qualified to determine whether he is addicted to pornography or whether it's turned into a sex addiction. There are sex addiction therapists who make this kind of determination and they have special tools and special training where they can help your husband in this realm, okay? It is not my job to diagnose your husband with a sex addiction, okay? I can't do that and neither can you, okay? But what I wanna offer is that regardless of whether or not your husband is addicted to pornography or addicted to sex, it's irrelevant, okay? And I say that with all the love in my heart because what I mean is regardless of whatever it is he's addicted to, I'm not worried about what he's addicted to, I'm worried about you and how it's affecting you. And you are affected whether he's addicted to porn or sex or many other things. You are affected by it. And that is what I focus on. That is my specialty. That's my special tools. My special training is on you and how you are affected. And if you are affected by whatever it is that your husband is doing, then I can help you. Does this make sense? Now, in this case, what she asked next is, Um, It's making me wonder if I'm obsessed, she put it quote unquote, obsessing (laughs) with your podcast and teachings was to make it sound better to me to lessen the blow. Now, she would have to come and coach with me specifically one on one in order for me to figure out whether this is just a worry or a fear or whether this is actually true. I don't know. She knows and I can help her figure it out if she comes and works with me. If she comes coach with me, I can ask her this. I can help her dive into it and help her figure out whether or not that's true. Okay, even asking it kind of leads me into this clue of, okay, does that resonate with you? Does that feel true or does that not feel true? So ladies, if you're thinking about this, this is something that I actually, this reminds me of when I did back a long while ago, you guys can go look it up. I did is pornography addiction infidelity or something like that. There's a porno, there's a podcast episode about infidelity. Okay. And I got pushback from some listeners about how infidelity, I said pornography addiction is not infidelity in my book, unless there's an actual physical person that has a physical relationship, right? And I go into that and you guys can go listen to it. And at the end, I say, regardless of, let's just say none of this is true. And let's say he actually did have an affair and it is infidelity. You still get to decide what you're going to do about it. And that's the same point that I want to bring here. Okay. Does calling it infidelity make it feel better to you? Are you saying it that way just to make yourself feel better because it validates your pain? Yes or no? And the same question I would ask my listener here. Do you think that making it feel like it's less, right, or if it's just a pornography addiction, does that make you feel better? Have you been trying to do that? Or does that not feel true? Does that not resonate with you? Because either way, what we have to do is say, okay, where am I and what am I feeling and what am I going to do about it? Regardless, again, of whether he's addicted to pornography or addicted to sex, you have thoughts and feelings about it. And that's my role. That's my work. And that's your work. Because he could get better. And she even goes in and talks about this. He's been going to a sex addiction therapist for months, years. He has been going, he's been going for a very long time now. Okay, he has been going for years. I just double checked the date. Years. He has been going to a sex addiction therapist for years and working on this. He's doing all the right things. He hasn't relapsed. He's talking to her. He's going to therapy. They're working together. Okay. And yet still she has thoughts and feelings about it. That's because it's her work to do. He can change all he wants, ladies. He can stop cold turkey today and never look at anything again, never quote unquote use again. And you still have your thoughts and feelings to work through. She says he has been going since Discovery Day in 2021. Okay, it's now 2023. Okay, this is several years later and she's still struggling with this. Why? Because she has thoughts and feelings about it. If you have thoughts and feelings about what your husband has done in the past, it's because there is work that you need to do. That's an indication that there's some emotion that you need to process that you haven't let go yet. And that's totally fine. But there's no reason for you to spend one more day carrying around this misery. This is your work to do. He has work that he needs to do, but there are things that you can't control. And what you can't control is him. But what you can control is you and how you come forward, how you start working forward from now on. Ladies, let me offer you something. I want you to check in with yourself right now. How do I feel about whatever it is that my husband's is doing? How do I feel about it? 
Am I trying to avoid it? And if you are, the only reason that you are is because your brain doesn't understand how to work through it. And that's not your fault. No one's ever taught you. That's what you're learning on this podcast. You're learning how to take a look inward. And if you want help, ladies, I want to encourage you to come coach with me. I work with you one-on-one so that you get the individual attention you need so I can teach you how to process your emotion. That looks like how to actually go in and release all of that emotional baggage that you've been carrying around. I have had many, many clients whose husbands have had affairs, have had sex addictions, all of those things. If you want to learn how to start separating yourself from what your husband is doing, then I want to encourage you to come sign up for this masterclass in February. Sign up today through my website, jolenewin.com. Go to the Coach Week tab. It's all up there. But then even more so, come see what coaching can do for you. These are the kind of thoughts that I can help you work through and help you figure out what's underneath. I don't know whether or not she's trying to lessen the blow or not, but if she is, it's only because the real reality is too painful and she doesn't know what to do with it. Our brain, again, is wired to avoid pain. Our brain is wired to keep us alive and to keep us in a positive place, which is wonderful, except that when we have things like this happen and we have negative thoughts and feelings about it, then our brain wants to avoid it. The problem is, is we can't avoid ourselves very long. It inevitably comes back up because we are always with ourselves. So the emotions that we feel are going to stay in there for as long as we keep them there. And pretending like we're fine and pretending like everything is fine is not going to make them go away. All it does is keep them underwater longer and make us more exhausted trying to pretend like they're not there. Even if you've been listening to this podcast for a really long time, if you've never coached with me, I really want to encourage you to ask yourself, why not? What are you waiting for? Ladies, this is your time. There is no reason for you to spend one more day carrying around the weight of what has happened to you. Why are you doing this? You don't need to. I'm right here. This is my job. This is my privilege to have gone through some of this before you did or during this time and to figure out the answers and how to work through it so that I can teach you. That is why I do what I do because there is no greater calling for me. This is it. This is what God put me on here to do. I truly 100% believe that. And I felt that my whole life. I felt like there was something bigger that I wanted to be a part of. And I kept trying to find it, ladies. I really did. And I kept trying to think that it w- that I thought it was, and it never felt 100% right. And I never fully committed until this time. There is a reason that I have learned the things that I have learned and that I am willing to do all the things so that I can reach as many of you as possible and tell you that you do not have to spend one more day feeling like this. Your husband's choices affect you. I'm not going to deny that. But what you do from here on out, that is up to you. Ladies, I love you. If your husband is struggling with a sex addiction, I can still help you. I can't diagnose him for you. I can't change him for you, but I can help you because you are affected in the same way, whether he's addicted to pornography or to sex. You are affected. You have thoughts, you have feelings, and that is my realm of expertise. That is what I'm here to help you with. Even if he's addicted to sex, even if he initiates a lot of sex because that is his buffer, it still doesn't have anything to do with you. No addiction. No buffering has anything to do with you. Even if he tells you it does, he's lying. No addiction, even if it's sex. And this is going to be tricky because it's connected to you. So you're going to have a lot of thoughts. You're going to have a lot of feelings. You're going to have a lot of distrust. That's all okay. It's all workable. We can figure all of it out and we can look at all of it and you can change it if you want to. And I can teach you how to do it. Come coach with me and I will help you do it. Ladies, I love you so much, and I don't want you to spend one more day like this, so I want to invite you to come work with me, and I'm going to teach you everything that I know so that you can feel confident moving forward in your life So because you know exactly how to handle anything that comes up, including your husband, even if he's a jerk, even if he does all the things that you don't want him to do, you don't have to live in fear because of it. Because you know that the very worst thing that could happen, no matter what he does, is you're going to have thoughts and you're going to have feelings. And once you know how to master your thoughts, and once you know how to manage your emotions, your feelings, then there is absolutely nothing stopping you. 
There's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't handle. Because you are stronger than all of it. I love you ladies so much. That's the kind of confidence that I want you to have. That's the confidence I have in you. It's all doable. I did it. I know I can teach you. I know you can do it too. Come learn with me and I will show you. I love you ladies so much. I'll talk to you later. Take care.